ABV Nation, all of YouTube, what's going on? It's Patrick with VectorVest back with you once again, bringing you another part to our technical analysis series. Today, we're going to be looking at an indicator that is great for identifying extreme levels in price, whether it be overbought or oversold, to help you capture rebounds or snapbacks to the mean. So if you're ready to find out which indicator we're talking about, make sure, as always, smash that like button, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. All that helps us out with the YouTube algorithms and doesn't cost you a thing, so you might as well do it for good luck. And without further ado, let's jump right into it here today. All right, welcome back. So today we're gonna to be focusing on Bollinger Bands and see how they can improve your trading. Bollinger Bands typically are looked at as a way of identifying major extremes in price by showing whether the stock is overpriced or underpriced or overvalued or undervalued, depending on where it's trading at and give you some signs of when you should start taking profits, when you may look at jumping in at a oversold condition and also can identify when volatility is starting to decrease or starting to increase. So with that, let's start off by taking a look at the definition of Bollinger Bands, and then we'll move on from there. So if we scroll down here a little bit, Bollinger Bands are a technical analysis tool defined by a set of trend lines plotted two standard deviations, both above and below, away from a simple moving average of a security price, but can be adjusted for a user's preference. So. Investopedia defines the typical Bollinger Bands are set based upon a 20-day simple moving average, but VectorVest has it defaulted to a 10-day simple moving average. Obviously, we can adjust that, which we'll see here in a little bit, but 10-day moving average is going to be a little bit uh, faster, more up-to-date with the current price. 20-day moving average is going to be a little bit slower. So depending on your personal preference, really depends on which settings that you would use but the same analysis can be done regardless of which option you choose. So if we scroll down a little bit further here, talks about how the Bollinger Bands are created. So you take a 20 day moving average of price for this example, and then you move two lines, one on top and one below, two standard deviations away. So what that tells you with two standard deviations, 95% of the movement will happen within that two standard deviation. So therefore, it would be extremely unlikely or extremely improbable that the stock will move outside of that two standard deviation or the Bollinger Bands. So this gives you the probability on your side, which is what VectorVest is all about, is putting the probability on your side whenever you're making a trade. So if we come down here a little bit further, it gives you the calculations on how all of this is calculated if you'd like to go over that. But when we scroll down a little bit further, getting into the squeeze. Now the squeeze is a central concept of the Bollinger Bands and when the bands come close together, constricting the moving average, it's called a squeeze and that indicates that volatility is subsiding or volatility is going down. Now whenever you see the bands contract or come together in a squeeze, then that is something you should keep on your radar because once you have that squeeze, you tend to see volatility start to pick up, but you don't know which wave it's gonna be moving higher or lower. You just know that a bigger move one way or the other is coming. So it's a good thing to add to your radar, add onto a watch list to keep an eye on it as it moves forward and wait for that volatility to start picking back up, especially if you're an options player, but we're not gonna get into that here today. So conversely, the wider apart the bands move, the more likely of a chance of decrease in volatility and the greater the possibility of exiting a trade. So this can indicate, you know, when the Bollinger Bands are really spread far apart, a good time to consider taking some profit off the table. So with that, let's go ahead, get out of here, jump into the software and start to take a look today. So we'll close out of here. And now, as always, we start off in the VectorVest 7 Unisearch feature, which is our scanning capabilities. Now, typically the ProTrader folder has a scan pre-built for all the indicators we've looked at so far. But Bollinger Bands, it does not have a pre-built one defined, so we're gonna build one together. So the first thing we do is add our parameter and we'll make a stock and stock price split adjusted greater than, let's say $1, so we'll just type in one. Then we have to add on volume, so we'll price volume once again, average volume, 50-day moving average of volume, greater than or equal to, we'll type in 100,000. 
And then we need to make sure we filter out the penny stocks. So stocks, filter by, and then we'll do exchange. And then we'll choose not equal to, and we'll remove the bulletin boards. We'll remove the options bulletin boards, over the counters, pink sheets, and that should be good for now. Oh yeah, and options over the counters as well. There we go. So we'll say, okay. And now for the Bollinger Band parameter that we're gonna add. So once again, we go to the parameter, click on stock, go to the price volume, price split adjusted. This time we're gonna choose Pro Trader and look for the Bollinger Band crossover. Then we click on the value, that's where we define what our settings should be. So we're gonna stick with the 20 day moving average because that's what Investopedia says is the industry standard. And what we're looking for is the price to cross above the upper band in the past one day. You have your two standard deviations here. But if we're looking for stocks that are oversold, especially after the market's been selling off like it has been, what we can do, we can cross above the lower band or cross below the lower band. So it's breaking down below that two standard deviation, therefore showing extreme oversold conditions. So we say, okay. Then we go ahead and run the search. And as you can see, our default sort is using VST descending. And we get a lot of bigger name stocks here based off the VST ratings. So therefore we're gonna click on graph all. And there we go, we've got our first stock, FANG, a petroleum stock. But as you can see over on the right hand side, our Bollinger Bands are set for a 10 day simple moving average and two standard deviations. So our scan was looking for a 20 day simple moving average. So we'll right click change the settings, and then adjust the period to 20. Say okay, and there we go. And what we'll do to enhance this layout a little bit more, we'll add a 20 day simple moving average or price as well to give you guys that visual here for what we're talking about. So we'll go ahead and right click on the price box, add moving average, simple, and then a 20. Just go ahead and add that onto our graph. So now this purple line is that 20 day simple moving average. The green band at the top is two standard deviations away from the 20 day simple moving average. And the white band at the bottom is two standard deviations lower than a 20 day simple moving average. So looking at it at FANG, our first example, we can see when it was riding up against the upper part of the Bollinger Bands, that showed an overbought condition. And just like with other overbought oversold indicators we've looked at, just because we get to that overbought condition doesn't make it necessarily a bad thing or say that the stock's going to reverse right away. It just gives you an early warning sign and maybe an indication that, hey, if you have a decent gain in the stock, maybe you should consider tightening up your stops to make sure you're locking your profit in. So here you rode through, came all the way back down, pierced the lower envelope, so therefore showing an extreme move to the downside or extreme oversold condition at this point. What happened right after it closed below that band? Snap back, moved higher here. Same situation, broke down below that band, had some volatility, but then moved higher, and now came tumbling back down, hit that lower part of the band, bounced back, and now once again, you're in that oversold condition, waiting for that bounce back here. So if you're looking for a stock to play that could potentially snap back and start to move higher back to the mean or that 20 day simple moving average, this would be a decent opportunity. Now keep in mind though, market timing dictates whether or not we should be buying or not buying. So therefore always consult the color guard before ever purchasing a position. Also by the time the color guard tells us that it is okay to buy, this list could change. So you'll wanna make sure that you keep up to date and run the scan on your own when we get that first initial buying opportunity. So if we move down to the next one, and I'll zoom into a three month time frame so you guys can see this a little bit better here. So ARLP, you can see three months ago, back around the middle of June, we were getting into that oversold condition, ran up, rode that upper band for quite some time. When we finally closed above it, you can see price came back down, tried one more time, failed, see some selling opportunities shown by the candlestick patterns here then continue to move lower, now getting to that oversold condition again. Now, looking at the bands, we can see that they were coming together, so therefore indicating a squeeze, and now you're starting to see them potentially starting to spread apart again. 
therefore telling us more volatility could be ahead for ARLP. Now, we don't know whether it's going to continue to the downside and see a significant drop, or if it's going to snap back and continue to ride higher, but we do know that volatility is winding down a little bit, and we could expect to see an increase in volatility in the near future on this one. So I highly recommend put on Bollinger Bands, go through your basket of stocks that you own, and see if that doesn't help you get a better idea of what to do with your positions. Let me know what, you're, what you find, though, down in the comments below. I'd love to hear you guys' feedback on this one. Moving on to the next one. DVN, another petroleum stock. You can see the Bollinger Bands are squeezing together, indicating less volatility through here as the stock was moving sideways. Now the Bollinger Bands are starting to spread apart, indicating volatility could be picking up for DVN as well. But you are in that oversold condition. Just need to keep an eye on it and wait to see a positive sign that it's starting to reverse course. OVV, another one, hit that overbought territory, slowly came back down, now hit oversold. And you can see the day we closed or opened up below that lower Bollinger Band, we saw a nice upward movement in price. So this could also help for anybody day trading or short term aggressive trading. This could also help gain insight onto which stocks you could see a big pop in on a day-to-day -day basis. So keep that in mind going forward for yourself as well. And then we'll look at one more PR, Permian Resources, another petroleum stock, hit the upper part of the band, now starting to pull back. You can see the bands are converging together, indicating volatility slowing down, but the bands start pulling apart. That shows you volatility is starting to pick back up again. So giving you an early warning sign and helping you out if you're an options player as well, because volatility can be your friend as an options trader. All right, so we'll get out of here and then we'll take a look at the opposite side of things. So if the markets have been overbought for quite some time and you're looking for stocks to play to the downside, then look for stocks that are overextended to the upside. So we'll go back to the search, click on the value box, and instead we'll say crossed below the upper band within the last one day. Say OK, rerun the search. Once our search results come up, we'll go ahead and graph these. And starting with the very first one, INSW, as you can see, it's ridden that upper band for quite some time here, getting overextended. I think just by looking at this for less than 10 seconds, we can all agree that this stock is definitely overvalued right now. And a pullback could be imminent on this one. So if you own INSW, keep an eye on this and don't, don't hesitate to lock profits in. As our founder, Dr. Delito states time and time again, you can never go broke taking profits. Moving to the next one, EPM had some huge swings higher and lower. You can see volatility is still increased significantly here since the Bollinger Bands are spread pretty far apart. You can see the price action, big swings higher and lower, but one to keep an eye on, especially as it's continuing to hit the upper part of the Bollinger Bands here, upper extremes of the Bollinger Bands. Just like it did here, pulled back, tried to make another run, came back down to oversold, bounced back up, hit overbought, oversold, overbought, et cetera, et cetera. Moving on to the next one, we'll zoom into a three month for this one. So ASC, you can see the Bollinger Bands were spreading apart back here. Starting to see the squeeze coming in, showing volatility slowing down. But now the bands seem to be expanding once again, and you're at the upper part of that band. So if the markets are moving in your favor to the downside, you have an overbought condition on this stock, could be an interesting one to keep on your radar. But once again, all of these indicators that we've talked about so far can be added with other indicators to help you gain more insight, which we'll talk about very, very soon in this series just a few more videos before we get to combining indicators together. So that's gonna do it for me today. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's session. Also, as a reminder, we do have the masterclass coming up. So we'll do that. We'll pull up the VectorVest page here for everybody to see. And the web address is vectorvest.com forward slash masterclass. Here, you can register for free. It's coming up in nine days, so not too much longer from now. So if you haven't registered yet, make sure to do so right now. You can click on the link down description of today's video and register there as well. 
but it's going to be a one day free trading class for everybody out there uh, to view. And we have a lot of information to help you improve your trading and become a more successful investor. So if you're looking for help to improve your portfolio, once again, click on the link down in the description below. Sign up for the free masterclass now. So until next time, it's been my pleasure being with you guys. Have a great rest of your trading day. Take care. Adios and toodles.